Hello, hello. Welcome to New Gameplay Today. I am your host, Wesley LeBlanc, and today we're going to be talking about a game I'm very excited to showcase called Saturnalia. Um, it's a super exciting, very strange, very different and unique uh, indie horror game coming from the studio uh, known as Santa Ragione. And they are based in Italy, and this game is based in Italy, and it is um, shaping up to be something really exciting, I think. So as you can see, the main highlight of this game, in my opinion, is the art style or the visual style. Um, it's somewhere between like clay animation or stop motion graphics, and then this like strange sketchbook type of style. I don't know, whatever you want to call it, I love it. Um, and it, I think it plays wonderfully into the aesthetics of this game and the horror aspects of it. And so we are controlling a character named Anita and she is one of multiple playable characters. Um, she's the one we're going to be uh, showcasing today, but there are other characters you can play as. Um, and basically her kind of main objective in the game is to find her um, lover or husband. I'm not actually sure if they're married yet, but her partner nonetheless. And um, this is on a very special day in this town. Um, there was a mass and then, which is why she's in the church. And then everyone kind of disappears or like goes into their house for a reason. And that reason seems to be uh, related to a strange occult ritual where a bird, demon, owl thing with horns uh kind of stalks the streets looking for victims um you don't really get to see the monster that kind of stalks around the town too up close uh but it's it's a very unique design kind of looks like a large person wearing uh like a cape made of feathers with like an owl face maybe and some horns or something i don't know you'll kind of see it uh, pass by and so as you can hear the um that rattling kind of sounds like one of those like baby toys that rattles that plays when the monster is near and so when you hear that you want to either slowly go somewhere to hide because you don't want to alert the monster with your feet or you want to find a place to hide which i just um showed anita doing and if you're in there i think you're safe I haven't actually been attacked by the monster while in there. Um, I don't think there's a way to make noise in there and kind of alert the monster to your position. Uh, I suppose if the monster watches you, you know, get into a hiding spot, it might be able to get you, but that hasn't happened to me yet. And so, yeah, we're kind of uh, walking around this church, which is uh, one of the big, you know, focus points of this small town in Italy. And you're trying to find your husband uh, or lover, partner. Again, I can't remember. And um, you think he's upstairs, but you have to find a way to get up there. So as you can see, I'm kind of walking around the church trying to figure out uh, exactly how to do that. I should note I'm about three to four hours into this game. There won't be too much by way of spoilers or really any spoilers. Um, I'm not gonna be diving too much into what I've already done story-wise, and I'm not gonna be showcasing too much of the story here. Uh, I'm just kind of here today on New Gameplay Today to give you a glimpse at what this game is doing and how it plays. And so one cool aspect of this game that I think is super unique for the horror genre is that it's kind of a roguelike. I don't know if you could, you know, technically refer to it as a roguelike, but um, every time you die, your character is like permanently dead. And so at that point you'd switch over to one of the other playable characters. And if all playable characters die, the town will completely shift. So it's very labyrinthian. It's like a giant maze. And each time you lose all your characters, the town's um, setup is completely changed. And so you'll keep your progress, like the clues you've unlocked, the shortcuts you've made and all that kind of stuff but you'll have to find where everything is repositioned. And I think that's a super unique thing to do in horror because, you know, part of horror is the ambiance and the atmosphere and, and feeling like you're in an unknown place that you don't really have a grasp on. And this game continues to keep doing that by constantly shifting the town um, around you. And so you can see, we just use like a little electrical tool 
that took me a really long time to get my hands on. Um, and it's been super helpful. Helps me turn on lights, helps me open gates that are previously locked, helps me get into the school, which was previously locked to me. Um, in very Resident Evil or survival horror fashion, like you're gonna be collecting plenty of tools and objects that will help you in one place and then help you in another place and kind of act as ways to open up shortcuts. And I love that about this game. I love, uh, you know, that classic Resident Evil feel where you know where you gotta go, but you can't yet get into there. You can't yet get there. And so instead you're gonna have to do this giant, you know, loop around to get where you're needed to go. Maybe that um, involves finding a tool that you don't yet have. And then when you go to find the tool, it turns out you need to find something else before you can get the tool. And then to get that something else, you have to talk to somebody and do this for them. And it kind of just builds on each other to the point where you're kind of on this long um, quest to find this, this, and that so that you can finally do this. And so as you can see here on the menu, these are all of my clues. I feel like I'm nearing the end of the game or at least halfway through based on how filled out my screen is. Um, and yes, this, this screen is pretty stressful, especially to look at if you haven't played the game. When I first started and was building, you know, my clue set by picking up clues and stuff and they would appear on that little screen. It was um, a little confusing and a little stressful, but uh, now that I'm three to four hours in, it all kind of makes sense. I feel like a amazing detective, you know, piecing together this story and seeing the way that all the clues interact with each other and how they build on each other is um, one of my favorite parts of the game. And so as you can see, every time you collect a clue or an object or something like that, it goes into your bag. Um, that little thing I just collected was a firecracker or noisemaker, which you can put into like little, I don't know, magazine or newspaper holders on buildings. Um, and they make a loud noise, which I suppose you could use to distract or, uh, you know, entice the creature monster to come to you. I haven't really used that too much, um, to be honest, when I hear the little baby rattler noise that lets me know the monster's coming, I am on my way out immediately. Uh, it's very scary to hear that noise. It gets louder and louder as it gets closer. And because there's no combat in the game, you're kind of, you know, your only option is to hide or run. Um, and so that aspect of the horror of this game has been really great for me. And so yeah, you can see that we just found the Saturnalia projection. If you're familiar with Saturnalia or the, or the word Saturnalia, um, you might have an idea of what this game is about. And so yeah, each clue, as you can see, just, oh, actually, one second, the monster is right on our tail. As you can see, that sound is alarmingly loud and terrifying. Um, and I'm being hunted. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna use the classic horror move, which is stand still and do nothing and just hope that the monster goes away. Please go away, monster. You are scaring me. So as you can see, the monster is quite relentless when um, they're on your tail, but they do eventually disappear. And I think they just kind of, you know, reappear somewhere else in the town. It's not like, oh, the monster's gone. He's somewhere around here or there's somewhere around here. Um, at least in my experience, I've found that once the monster leaves, I'm free to kind of walk around and do my thing again. So as you can see, we've got the match lit. The match is probably the most important tool in your disposal. This town is extremely dark, as you can see, um, and the matches light up the way. More importantly, throughout the town are little campfires, or oh, they're basically small little bonfires uh, for part of the mass that has happening in town on this specific day. But that translates as, uh, you know, permanent lights for you in the town. And so it's important to be, you know, to keep matches on you at all times because you're going to need them. You go into dark places like schools, mines, castles, uh, all these places are dark. Uh, and then you also need to have a match to light a campfire that you might find on the ground. 
So as you can see, we're back at the church. I have a hunch of uh, what I should be doing. And let's check it out and see what we do. Ooh, one thing I want to note is each note, you see how it's kind of rotating um, in the top right corner and now on the main screen. Each note, you can kind of view the area where you found it and that kind of lets you know, oh, okay, I need to go find this ladder. Let me look around the environment that this ladder's in. Let me see if I can recognize that wall or that poster board or, you know, there's clues in each of these to kind of give you an idea of where to go. Because at the end of the day, this game is really just walking around and finding where you need to go to get clues. So as you can see, the creature must be deep underground and um, that's kind of like a little viewpoint into the creature's nest. And we've got all kinds of clues like that. As you see, there's like dozens on the screen. Um, and each one has like a little line that connects to this and that. And you have this giant sprawling network of clues uh, to help you solve this central mystery. For now though, Anita's mystery is how do I break into the part of the church I have not yet reached? And so fortunately, we're gonna go around here to the scaffolding. I don't wanna spoil too much about the characters or the central story of this game, but I will say that Anita is not from this town, um, but she has returned for a reason. Um, other characters you'll find include, you know, uh, a younger like teenage girl. There's a, you know, another guy who's probably in his 20s. There's Anita's, um, you know, lover that you do find. Uh, there's, there's other characters as well. It's not pictured or shown here in this footage, but there is a, oh, let's let this play out. As you can see, I've tripped an alarm and the monster is immediately hot on my tail. If you make any kind of loud noise like that, that monster's coming for you. And here we're going to get a quick glimpse of it. Spooky. Ooh. So as you can see, it kind of looks like a person wearing like a cape and mask or something. I'm not too sure, but it's terrifying, especially in this art style, especially with that loud noise in my ears. Um, I'm loving that aspect of it. It's almost like a, I don't wanna say Mr. X because they're not constantly searching for you, or at least it doesn't feel like that in the way that Mr. X does from Resident Evil 2, but uh, it is a giant stalking figure that will, you know, if you mess up and accidentally make too much noise, they're coming for you. And so it was necessary for us to trip that alarm because now we can access these stairs that drop down. And so we're gonna head up the scaffolding and see what happens. You can see at the bottom, there's like a little stamina bar. To be honest, I haven't really paid much attention to it. Um, I don't know if like later in the game you do a lot more running, but I rarely run so much that I don't need the stamina. On that note, there are items that like refill your stamina immediately. So perhaps there's areas of the game where I'm gonna be using that sprint a lot more. Uh, four hours in though, I've not really had to worry too much about it. And I, I'm not sure if I re referred to her partner um, as Paul earlier, but it's Damiano. I believe Paul is a different playable character. And so we have finally made it inside the church. This is an area of it um, I have not yet accessed. So let's see what we find. Just to go over a few more specifics of this game as we um, you know, reach the end of this segment of new gameplay today. Saturnalia is a game coming out sometime in 2022 on the Epic Game Store. It is being developed and published by Santa Ragione, and it is set in Sardinia, Italy. And so I wanted to quickly jump ahead and show you uh, Anita being killed by the monster.
And that's going to do us for today. As always, thank you for watching this new gameplay today, and be sure to subscribe to the official YouTube channel for Game Informer to catch more NGTs, video essays, reviews, features, and more. Bye now.